More than most ops in Siege, Ash is a bit of a crutch for people who maybe don't understand the fundamentals of the game, because she's fast and she can click heads. My name's Blackwatch, welcome to How To Play. In the description you'll find timestamps to skip to whatever's relevant to you depending on your skill level, but if you're new here, or you've been here before, consider subscribing because we're doing guides every single week running from the start to the very end of the operators that are out right now. And this week we're talking about Eliza Cohen, also known as Ash. She's a one-armor, three-speed attacker from the FBI SWAT in the United States of America, baby. And she's the leader of Team Rainbow. For now, she might change that in 10 days' time when the new CGI comes out. But we'll see. She has two primary weapons, a G36C AR that has access to the angled grip and the 1.5X. That's two things that it's got up against its counterpart, the R4C. However, the R4C deals one more point of damage per shot at close range and has a much higher rate of fire. But the recoil is absolutely ludicrous and so you're going to make that choice. Do you want more versatility with your attachments but less of a shred machine? Or do you want to deal with crazy recoil? For me, it's the G36, but the choice is up to you ultimately. In terms of her sidearms, she's got the 5.7, which is one of my favorite guns, but I don't use it very often. Sam Fisher's preferred sidearm of choice. And the M45 USOC, that is a tasty little 1911. I go with the M45 because I like the stopping power, but it's very low cap. If you want a high cap pistol that's incredibly accurate but has lower shot damage, Go for the 5.7, you're not going to be disappointed. It's got clean irons as well, actually. Secondary gadgets, she has claymore and breaching charges. Pick these for the situation. Generally speaking, I'm going to use the claymore because I want to watch my back whilst I'm moving through the building and clearing. But if you're on vertical attacks, breaches are probably going to be preferred because they just do a lot. And it saves you using your unique gadget, the M120 SEM, or CREM, yeah, CREM, breaching launcher. And this thing is a beast. It has two breaching rounds that are now immune to electricity. Never used to be. It's good stuff. It's going to come in handy later when we talk about the tips. And they have a three meter detonation radius. When they detonate on walls, they create a sort of vertical oval of a breach rather than the square breach that you get from regular breaching charges. It will be tall enough for you to run through, but not quite as wide as a normal breach hole from a breaching charge. It does not do hard reinforcements or hard reinforcements all reinforcements are hard anyway it doesn't do reinforced walls it does soft walls and things like that so you want to use this as a straight shooting machine because it does have elevation markers on the site when you ads but it doesn't mean anything the projectile is a straight shot it doesn't deviate at all there's no drop off where you point it will go and it could go forever if you wanted it to it destroys shields, bulletproof gadgets, castle barricades, barbed wire, and people in some situations. Not too often, but you know, we can talk about that later. And if you want to clear any gadgets that are not bulletproof, it's going to do them just fine as well. Strengths, she's got a solid loadout, and she's got two good choices. The G36 and the R4C are both great guns for different reasons. I'd say that her secondaries are a bit more polarizing in choice than the G36 and the R4C because they are so different, but nine times out of 10, you're probably not gonna be using them as Ash. Her gadget is always useful in some way or another. That's another strength of hers. You're never gonna find a round where Ash can't do something with a breaching launcher. She has massive versatility with that gadget as well. It can be used for fragging, not exclusively, if you turn off the video before you see the rest of the tips, don't take that away. Uncle Blackwatch is not giving you that advice. But it can be used for fragging in some situations. It can be used for destruction, it can be used for gadget clear, utility clear. The works. It's a great gadget. And the biggest strength that Ash has, she is absolutely minuscule. She's got the tiniest hitbox, the skinniest arms, she hasn't eaten Weetabix in 24 years, and she's incredibly fast. Tiny hitbox and speed makes four frags, and that's where you're going to get a plenty with Ash when you play her, if you play her, because most of the time she's going to be picked. Weaknesses, her gadget's very easily wasted. The number of times I have seen barricades that are not castle barricades getting obliterated by a breaching round at the start of the round when she has so many spare magazines sitting ready to just be drilled into these barricades 
it's just so immensely numb of that person in their brain to make that decision. So do not do that. Sometimes she can act as a bit of an off switch for your own brain. This happens to me, this happens to anyone. Sometimes you just play a character who does a certain thing, like run fast and kill people, and that's all you want to do. But try not to, most of the time. There will be times when this is applicable. Her weapons are no longer best in class, particularly on console. I'm applying this more to the R4C than the G36. The G36 is still a very well-rounded gun, but it's not as lethal as the R4C. But the R4C is now very difficult to control compared to what it used to be. It's definitely... It's had a bit of a Twitch treatment. Twitch is still usable, obviously, with the F2 on console, but it's still difficult. Ash is in a similar situation with the R4C, except I would still argue that the F2 is better out of those two guns. And the last weakness for me is that her secondary gadgets really don't complement her playstyle at all. She's fast, she wants to get in, do things, take quick actions. You could argue the Claymore is one that suits it, but how often are you going to be doing massive long sweeps? How often are you going to be outside with an area that you want covered with a Claymore? Not very often. I will take it for those moments that I do sweep through larger areas, but 9 times out of 10, it's probably staying in the pocket. And the breaching charges, again, breaching charges are a slow gadget and you're playing a fast operator, so they don't really mesh. For tips and tricks for Ash, don't shoot breaching rounds directly at bulletproof gadgets that aren't a deployable shield. Now, this isn't a gospel thing. If you do this, I'm not going to strike you down. I am not God, though. But... We'll get into that discussion in a different video. Sometimes, if you shoot them into bulletproof gadgets, they'll fall off. I don't know why this happens, but it does occasionally. Instead, shoot it in the surface that is directly next to the gadget that you're trying to hit. It doesn't matter anymore if you shoot the breaching round at an electrified wall. It will not get zapped. The only thing that's going to counter the breaching round is an ADS or a magnet from Jaeger and Romai, respectively. So you want to avoid those at all costs. Obviously, if you're trying to shoot some stuff into a room, you want to find out if there's something that's going to eat your gadget first. You only have two of these, and you want to use them well. That brings me to my next tip. If you're going to shoot them at a doorway, if there's a barricade in the way, and there's lots of gadgets on the other side that you want to clear, shoot it on the barricade. You don't have to worry about Jaeger. If there's not a barricade, shoot it on the floor, just before the doorway. That way it's not going to get snatched by the ADS. You still get your gadget doing some damage to the gadgets on the other side. Remember, this has a large vertical explosion radius. You want to take advantage of that because that's the way that the charge shapes itself and deals its damage. You're going to be able to clear doorway and hopefully keep your gadget at the same time. You want to use your drones and your teammates as often as you possibly can. This applies to any operator, but Ash in particular. She thrives on intel. She has such a, an inherent advantage in her push strength because of her hitbox, because of her weapons, because of how fast she is, and these are massively, massively bolstered by good intel about where the guys are, how many there are in the room, and where you need to be pointing that boomstick when you get through the doorframe. Be willing to be aggressive and use that speed to your advantage. You want to leverage Peeker's advantage here. This is not an exploit. This is not something that is unfair. This is the way that latency works in online games. There is a Peeker's advantage in Siege. When you run through a doorway, because you're the one taking the action, you're not going to be registered on the screen of the person who is viewing your action as quickly as you will see them by taking the action. It's just the way that propagation works in terms of movement, in terms of positioning, in terms of the way that the server is informed about positioning. You will be on their screen later than they will be on your screen because you're moving fast. Obviously you're at a disadvantage in that you're having to take in a changing surrounding in that moment. But if you can register where people are and you can pick them out from the background, you're potentially going to get a kill. So be fast, be aggressive. Do not dilly-dally as Ash. She doesn't suit the slow playstyle. 
she suits a faster playstyle, a more aggressive playstyle, and you want teammates and operators that are going to complement that playstyle. And you need to be willing to let go of your concerns about pushing hard and instead just go, right, this is my best tool as this character, is how fast I am and how small I am, so let's make the most of it when you do go to push. Obviously, don't push when it's not necessary. Focus on destructibles that are problematic for your team. So you don't want to be taking out barricades, as I said. Unless it's a castle barricade that you need to get rid of. You do not want to be using this on wooden barricades in any circumstance. Because it's just not a good plan. Actually, I take that back. One circumstance is if you want to clear gadgets on the other side of that barricade. But, I mean, like, right next to the barricade. That's the only circumstance in which case it would also be actually countering Jaeger and Romai by doing that. That's the only situation where you want to be taking out a barricade with this breaching launcher. Otherwise, you want to be dealing with bulletproof gadgets that are problematic. You want to be dealing with surfaces that need to be opened, angles that you can create. So many times in the clips in, the, in this video, you're going to see me create an angle that was not there before. And it enables me to either get shots on target or get pressure onto someone who otherwise would have had me locked to entering or firing from a doorway. That's the kind of stuff, the kind of map manipulation that you need to leverage as much as you can as an ash. Coordinate your pushes, call out immediately to your team if you die. So if you're in there first, 9 times out of 10 if you're ash you will be, you'll be the point man. You want to be able to straight away, if you get killed, go, this guy's there. Or more specifically, you want to go, actually, over there is this guy. Because it doesn't matter as much who the person is, it's more about where they are. So get that accurate call out in straight away. Don't hesitate, don't go, oh, I'm having such a bad game today, I can't believe I got killed. Tell them where they are. Then you can moan about it, then you can go and cry. Just don't do it in that moment. Control yourself, my friend. Don't underestimate how potent you are under the floor. You can wipe gadgets, you can get rid of people in common anchor points. You're talking your uh, blue wall on border, for example. If you're talking armory lockers and border, if someone is sitting behind that blue wall, you go underneath into vents. One breaching round up there, immediately their arse is gone, 50 health is missing and you're stopping them from taking that spot again because it's completely exposed from underneath. Similarly, if there's any gadgets that are placed on a destructible floor, get a breaching round from below, up, bang, no more bandit batteries, no more electro claws. This is the kind of stuff you need to watch out for. This is the kind of stuff you're very good for. You can confirm kills with your gadget, but this is a resource. Every gadget is a resource, unless it's one that respawns. <laughs> so be aware of what you're sacrificing. That is 50% of your main gadget's efficiency. Or, not efficiency, but charges. Can you sacrifice 50% of your gadget there? Potentially. A kill is very significant, but you need to consider, do they have an ADS covering it? Is it just going to get eaten? Can I realistically hit that person from this position with a breaching round? Or is it just going to blow up and do nothing to them? It's going to be a gamble. It might pay off, but just weigh up the value that your gadget can provide versus the value that your gadget might not provide. And the last one for me, accept that your speed and your hitbox, whilst being a massive advantage, are no substitute for skill, positioning, and intel. Sometimes you get in the jump on people with your speed and your hitbox is going to be enough but don't rely on it as a crutch you want to learn the fundamentals of the game get your map knowledge get your skill with weapons get your skill with intel call outs drones gadgets observation tools all that stuff the fundamentals of what makes siege siege and not just your regular twitch shooter get them shored up as quickly as possible and remember one operator is one operator you can't always be Ash, and there will be times where you have to rely on other people. It's far too many folk that I see who hate being other operators other than the people that they enjoy playing. And the ones that like to be the classic Ash Jaeger main that do not shift, they're the ones who struggle 
when you get into ranked and the enemy team decides, well, I don't want to play against Ash. It does happen. Be ready for it. Get your fundamentals right. Enjoy the operators that you play. And subscribe to PRD Blackwatch. Because it'll make you a lot happier. I promise. Have a good weekend, everybody. Dos vidanya. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.